Hey, how you guys doing today? My name is Miguel Quiles, and in this video, I wanna show you guys how I upload my photos to Facebook and keep them looking just high quality and pristine. I get this question all the time, and so I thought today I would make a video and show you guys step-by-step step how you could upload your photos to Facebook and hopefully get them to look as good as they do on your computer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm working with a photo today, which is a photo that I took of Julie a few months ago. I'll put her information in the description below. And so I'm working with a TIFF file right now. And this is something, there's a couple things before we get started that I wanna make sure you understand uh, so that you have the best opportunity and the best chance of getting a really high quality photo on Facebook. First things first is that you wanna work with a high quality photo to begin with. Talked about this in my photographing skin video. If you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out after you're done with this one. But you wanna work primarily with either a TIFF file or a RAW file. From there, you're gonna convert the TIFF or the RAW to a format that actually can upload to Facebook and be uh, high quality and it will look good. So start off first with a image that is high quality. So today working with a TIFF file, this TIFF file is 16-bit. Uh, if you are the type of person when you do your retouching that you blur the skin and then you see my photographs and you're wondering, wow, how come Miguel's photos on Facebook look so awesome? The key for me is that I don't do any skin blurring in post-production. So keep this in mind. Again, uh, you have to put good in to get good out. Uh, so in this case, when it comes to your photographs, you wanna make sure that you're not blurring the skin because if you are doing any type of skin blurring, Gaussian blur or anything like that, um, you go to upload using the technique that I'm about to show you, it's still not gonna look good. So make sure that you're doing minimal uh, processing to the skin in terms of blur and you should be good to go. So looking at this image here, we've got something that looks pretty good. Eyelashes are sharp, skin looks great. Go ahead and back out here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to, and I, I didn't say this in the beginning, but uh, hopefully you guys see in the thumbnail, it says Photoshop, right? So this is going to be a tutorial on how to do this in Photoshop. Now, there are probably ways to do this in Lightroom and Capture One. Um, all of my raw processing ultimately ends up in Photoshop once it's done. So honestly, I mean, if you're doing it with a different program, by all means, give this uh, technique a try but primarily I'm focusing on showing this to you in Photoshop. So again, we'll go File, Export, and Export As. And I am on a PC, so if I do Alt, Shift, Control, W, that's a shortcut that will bring me to this Open As dialog box. We'll wait for that to open up. And so let's talk through here very quickly and briefly as to what we're gonna punch in here as far as the different values. The first thing we're gonna work with is the file setting. Now, oftentimes people will upload their files in a JPEG format. Maybe you deliver JPEGs to a client or you upload JPEGs to a website. I'm going to put forward to you to not do that. Maybe if you're sending it to clients, send it to them as a JPEG, but when it comes to uploading a file to Facebook, I tend to do two exports. At the end of my process, I'll send a JPEG full resolution, uh, upload it into a folder, and that's what I send to the client. And then I have a separate folder, which is a web folder, and that web folder contains these pictures that are gonna go on Facebook. And I send these to the client as well because, let's face it, everybody puts their photos on Facebook, so you don't wanna send them a high-resolution JPEG that they're gonna try to upload to Facebook, and it's gonna get compressed because the files are huge. Send them a file that's already web-ready and it's gonna be good on you because they'll probably tag you as a photographer if they're not. Shame, man, get them to tag you. But uh, make sure that you're sending them an option to upload to the web. We're going to change this file setting. If it says JPEG on your uh, Photoshop, as it does in pretty much everybody's, that's fine. But change the format to PNG. I don't know why this works. I don't know all of the uh, technical things behind it. I'm just showing you guys the way that I do it. And I always upload PNG files. I do not upload JPEGs. So we're gonna go ahead and change the format to PNG. The next thing that we're gonna look at is this image size dialog box. And uh, this is a 4,000 by 6,000 um, pixel image. I believe this was taken with the Sony A9. And so what we're going to do, you need to keep these two numbers in mind. 
If it is a portrait orientation, meaning it is a vertical image, we're gonna change the width to either 900 or 960. Now, I tend to always do them as either 900, uh, nine times out of 10, I've done them as 900, but then I looked on Facebook and I saw recently that they said 960 was actually the value. 900 still looked really good to me um, and it produces a little bit of a smaller file. So I would tell you, if you do it at 900 and you feel like it's still not looking good, try it at 960 for the width. Um, and I'll go ahead and change this one here to 960. Um, you should have it to where it will automatically change the height of your image based off of the width that you select. So if I change it to 960, it's gonna change the height to basically match the proportions. Um, if it is a horizontal image, you wanna change the width to 2048. Now again, why does this work? I don't know. This is what Facebook says that you need to upload to um, get your images looking really good. So if it is a vertical image, width is either 900 or 960, pick one, try one. If one doesn't look good, try the other. Um, if it is a horizontal, it's super easy because all you have to do is just change the width to 2048 and you're good to go. Again, the height will automatically be adjusted for you within Photoshop. So in this case, we've got 959. So it'll do this sometimes where it'll take the image and maybe it can't do 960 for whatever reason, it can't constrain it to that. If you choose 900, for example, and it does it at like 899, that's okay too. Um, but dial in either of those two numbers and it'll adjust it as necessary. Now for resampling, most of these look the same to my eyes. However, I tend to do preserve details as the uh, resampling method that I use. I've looked around online and from my own eyes and my own taste, I've just noticed that my images, whether I'm shooting studio or outdoors, they tend to consistently look good when I choose preserve details for the resample method. The next section that is available for us to make adjustments to, we're actually not gonna make any adjustments to, which is the canvas size, because once you change your image size, it's automatically going to adjust your canvas size. So we're not gonna change anything there. Um, we just wanna make sure that it matches what it says in the image size dialog box, when in this case, it actually is already set up, which is great. Metadata, you can go ahead and add your metadata to the image. Um, and all you have to do is just basically select copyright and contact info, and it will uh, bake that into the file. And then for color space, I always convert them to sRGB because that's where, sRGB is basically how the, uh, the web shows images. It shows it in that color space. So I always convert it to sRGB because in my case, I'm shooting Adobe RGB in camera. So if I go to export that image and it goes out in Adobe RGB, the colors sometimes might be out of whack because it's a different color space. So always make sure that you have this checked where it says convert to sRGB. And essentially, that's it. That's all you have to do. These are the settings that you plug in. You hit export all, that will create a PNG file. And then at that point, we go ahead, we go to Facebook, we upload that PNG file, we add our descriptions and all that good stuff, upload it and we should be good to go. So with that being said, that's it. That's all you have to do. Try it out. Let me know in the comment section below if it is working for you. If it does, please make sure to thumbs up this video. If you guys are enjoying all of the free content that I'm putting out on this YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I uh, would love to have you guys here for my future videos where I'm gonna cover uh, business topics, photography, lighting, um, gear reviews, all kinds of stuff. So please subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with your friends. I always end up finding people that will say, oh, how do you upload to Facebook and keep it looking good? Once you've learned how to do it, which you're learning because you just watched this video, pay it forward, share the video with them, let them see it, and hopefully it helps you guys out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys found it helpful, and I will see you in the next one.